Good afternoon. Please stand and join us in singing our opening song, You Are Mine, as we begin the celebration of life for David Oliva. Oh, my God. 
Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, David died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. And we will now place the call on the casket reminding us of how David entered the life of faith through baptism and returns to God in that same glory. The Paul signifies the baptismal bid that David received when he entered the church in Christ. And now he takes it with him, unstained, to the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised with the dead the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant David, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, for all peoples, Yahweh is preparing a banquet of rich food, a banquet of fine wines, of succulent food, of well-strained wines. On this mountain, he has destroyed the veil which used to veil all peoples, the pall enveloping all nations. He has destroyed death forever. Lord Yahweh has wiped away the tears from every cheek. He has taken his people's shame away everywhere on earth, for Yahweh has spoken. And on that day it will be said, Look, this is our God. In him we put our hope, and that he should save us. This is Yahweh. We put our hope in him. Let us exalt and rejoice since he has saved us. 
This is the word of the Lord. reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our condition and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even to point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our Master, has embraced us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. So you also should love one another. And this is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, the gospel today very succinctly sums up the reason why we are here today. To Evelyn, to Richard, Denise, Mary, Robert, Kathleen, Suzanne, Leonard, Paul, Barbara, Marianne, Melanie, and David's many loving nieces and nephews. The parish of St. Mary Magdalene extends our deepest condolences today. We will pray for all of you and for the repose of David's soul throughout the week. And we will remember him on All Souls Day. To know David was to know a man of keen insight. A man of insatiable curiosity who loved reading, a man of wisdom, a man of humor, and a man with sharp instinct and sharp insight into human characters and to personalities. It was also to know a man who loved greatly. And when one loves greatly, one also suffers greatly. Because in order to love, we must make ourselves vulnerable. We have to be open to life, the good and the bad in life, those things that make us happy, but also those things that bring us sorrow and pain. To love is to be vulnerable to suffering. And David did love deeply. And as he grew older, he suffered physical and emotional pain. No doubt the most painful of all was the loss of his precious daughter, Julie, who preceded him in death. And that's how we go about life. But it is our understanding, through the eyes of faith, that death is not an end. What we gather here today for is not an ending, but a transition, a continuation of a journey. The body is not a machine that wears down and then we're done with it. If that were the case, then what we are experiencing today would truly be tragic. But our life and our physical bodies prepare all of us for eternity. And this is what that deep love and deep suffering that we experience during this brief period of life is all about. We do not pass from life into death. Rather, we pass from death into life. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he said, Our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body 
to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjugation to himself. These are words of hope. These are words of restoration. These are words of renewal. And life comes with its afflictions. And nobody wants to experience these afflictions, but we do not turn away. Because to turn away from these afflictions is to turn away from life itself. In the 34th Psalm, we hear, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the afflicted man called out, the person afflicted of soul, of emotion, and yes, of our physical bodies as they deteriorate. When the afflicted man called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he delivered him. What we face is not an end but a transition. And painful as it feels in the moment, we know that it is the opening that we have been preparing for all our lives. In the Gospel of John we hear, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. And this fruit that John writes about is the fruit of the acts of love. Whoever loves his life, in other words, loves transitory things, inordinately, whoever loves his life in that way loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world, making this temporary life an end in of itself, will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. And so with this, we have a deeper understanding of David's life and indeed of ours that it is a preparation with afflictions, with pain, but also with beauty and wonder and grace. It is a preparation of passing from death into life. In the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, he wrote, this treasure we possess in earthen vessels, vessels that wear away, is to make it clear that it's surpassing power. The power of our lives, the power of our bodies comes from God and not from us. We are afflicted in every way possible, but we are not crushed. We are struck down, but we are never destroyed. We do not fix our gaze on what is seen, but on what is unseen. What is seen is transitory. What is unseen lasts forever. Indeed, we know that when the earthly tent in which we dwell is destroyed, we have a dwelling provided for us by God and not made by human hands, but one that lasts forever. We groan, says Paul. 
We groan while we're here, even as we yearn to have our heavenly habitation in Belupus. While we live in our present tent, our temporary dwelling, we groan and we are weighted down because we do not wish to be stripped naked and exposed to God. But rather, we have a heavenly dwelling place that will envelope us so that our mortality, our mortality will be absorbed by life itself. And so how do we prepare for eternity? How did David prepare? Was it going through strenuous exercises, self-denial, sacrifice? Oh, yes, there was that. There was that too. And charity as well. Those are important. But the teachings of the gospel and the teaching we receive from our Lord Jesus Christ points to the one ingredient. That is essential. Preparation for eternity is based in love. Love is what endures. Love is what remains. Life is not taken away from us, but it goes on. In the first letter of John, the apostle wrote, we know that we have passed over from death into life because we love. And anyone who does not love remains in death. Nicholas Cabasilius wrote in his book on the life in Christ something that I think is a message for all of us gathered here today and profoundly puts into perspective the life that we've all been privileged to encounter with David. He wrote what could have a more pro proper right to the name life than love? And besides this, that which alone is left when everything else is taken away, that which does not allow the living to die, is life. But this life is how we love. Paul says, when everything else is destroyed, love remains. And it is sufficient for that life in Christ, our Lord, to whom all glory belongs. So my brothers and sisters, as we take David to his rest today, let us not look at this as an ending, but as a transition, a continuation of the journey, a journey that all of us are on. And let us conform ourselves to love so that we too may have eternal light. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, confident in God's love and mercy, we 
response today is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Lord, David, whose faith sustained him during this earthly life, that he may be received by the saints with love and joy into the eternal dwelling place prepared for him. Let us Thanks pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Evelyn and David's family and friends, that they may be given hope, peace, and consolation treasuring the memories they have of him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For David's deceased relatives, especially his beloved daughter, Julie, and his parents, that the peace of heaven may be theirs forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. David looked beyond his own needs to those who were marginalized in our society. May God watch over the most vulnerable and may they find in us, as they find in David, a true and loyal friend. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For immigrants, the homeless, and those caught in war, all dear to David and Evelyn, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world and for our parish community, that as we strive to do God's holy will, we may be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now turn to St. James Peace Campbell, burning at the foot of the cross. We pray for, excuse me, we pray for an end to all wars and the safe return of our soldiers. We pray for all who are threatened by violence in our neighborhoods our nation and the world. Mary, Queen of Priests, peace. Christ. Jesus, Prince of Peace, have, have mercy on us. Heavenly Father, knowing that in your love you grant the prayers that we offer that will nurture us in our lives of faith, we offer these prayers and those that remain unspoken in our hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of all the church. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant David, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to, to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so, in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you with joy as we proclaim similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate. 
celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain the inheritance of your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, with St. James, St. Mary Magdalene, and all of the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we receive really the unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, to advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your church on earth with your servant, our Holy Father, Pope Francis. David, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and all the people of God your son has gained. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, and in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant David, whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
brothers and sisters, let us offer each other some sign of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant David, who today has journeyed from this world, may by his sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, please be seated uh, for the eulogy, but first we will hear from the pastor of our parish, Father Tom, and senior parochial vicar, Father Dave. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a true honor to celebrate uh, David's celebration of life here this afternoon here at St. James Church of St. Mary Magdalene Parish. David was a true giant in our parish community. He really, really, really well, well served our parish in multiple tasks, multiple capacities over the years, and was a wonderful greeter at the four o'clock mass every Saturday evening, a lector up here, and all the various behind the scenes work that David did, and he will be truly missed. He definitely had a wonderful sense of humor, and he utilized his gifts and talents to the best of his ability. And just to see the remarkable pouring out of love uh, yesterday over at Neat Funeral Home, and seeing that parking lot fill, and also walking into the funeral home yesterday afternoon and seeing it packed, and all the love, the warmth, and all the conversations and the stories. David really left an imprint on all of us. He will be truly missed, and we are truly blessed to have him in our life. And to Evelyn, know that you definitely have our love and our support. And as the sun is shining outside of our church here this afternoon, David's light is definitely shining down upon all of us. special person from the moment I arrived at St. James Parish because he gave a unique perspective in my life that I felt so very, very much. Someone who you can talk to and someone who you can be of consolation to, especially during times when there are difficulties and troubles. I saw him perform beautifully that, of course, during the interim, when Father Metzler, after Father Metzler passed, and during the period where there was no pastor at the church, and so beautifully in preparation and leadership. But the one thing that impressed me the most, you know, it's good someone who you can use as a sounding board when you see the difference between the way things are and the way things really should be. And I think very early, David realized that I was that kind of person. So he never held back, he pretty much told me about the way he saw things and the way they are and definitely the difference between that and the way things should be. And as I listened to him and as he listened to me, we both got joy and courage and love to continue on. And I had to watch myself because guess what? Most of what he was saying, I agreed with. <laughs> I just wasn't as vocal about it as he was. <laughs> But that's the kind of person he was. He told it and thought it like it is. And we are reminded as we celebrate his transition to the Lord that we can be just as bold. So thank you, David. And thank you for teaching us how to live, how to love, and how to forgive.
Good afternoon. I feel a little bit like I've crossed over the DMC here. I've never really been beyond that. <laughs> but I'm here, and maybe I'm going to stay. First, Evelyn, thank you so much for your love and support, your friendship, and for this honor today. I'm Christine Probert, a member of the St. James community, a friend of David Oliva's, and as shocked and saddened by his unexpected death as each and every one of you are. David had a rich, full, and varied life in his 84 years. I was lucky enough to know him for this most recent chapter, his return to Pittsburgh. My friendship journey with him has been, I like to think, unique. But I actually think everybody thinks the same thing about their journey with David because he had a way of making you feel special. He was kind and he was super smart and he was funny and he was caring and he was supportive. But I always thought that what was so special about him was his unassuming nature and how he shared who he was and what he had done in an almost off-handed way. <coughs> and my response to his often unexpected sharing was most likely a side-eyed glance and an inquiring and incredulous, what? Say more. And he would. He would willingly share. Now this all sounds kind of crazy, but I do have examples. Um, I had known David only a few years, when in an offhanded way, he referred to his time working in the circus. <laughs> yes, a circus. And when he said that, I of course gave him a big side eye and said, what? Say more. And he did. He shared the fun, he shared the challenges, and he shared what it meant to him at that point in his life to be part of a circus community. Ditto his stint as a shoemaker. What? Say more. And his response, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but it's a lot harder than it looks. The same when he referred to a mutual friend in an offhanded way as his, and I quote, spiritual advisor. Well, I have to tell you, I wasn't sure at that time that they really existed other than on television, and I certainly never knew anybody who had one. So I looked at him and said, what? <laughs> Say more. And he did, sharing the deeply important personal importance to him of attending to his faith with regular spiritual check-ins with another human being. Likewise, when he shared his love of cars and remarked on how special it was to him, not only for him, but also that Julie shared his passion and perhaps taught him with her specialty for restoring vintage VW Beetles. And I said, what? Please say more. And he did, sharing both the joy of Julie and the tsunami of helplessness and grief her death brought to him. I only know Julie through David, but two things I'm certain about of David and Julie. First, David was a great girl dad. And that's a new definition. It didn't exist when Julie was born, but it defines the special role fathers play in teaching their daughters that they have no limits, regardless of cultural and or historic or religious norms, and David was definitely 
an early adopter of that belief, and to my mind, an excellent girl dad. And in fact, being a good dad, every woman who knew David knows that he was a good girl dad, a great girl dad. The other thing I'm certain about is a bit more convoluted, but please hear me out. I believe that Julie, and I use Julie like in quotes, Julie, was what allowed David to have this great last chapter, the past 16 years of a fulfilled and loving life because of Julie. And I know this because of another almost offhanded comment from David. Well, you know Warren Messler and Julie were great and fast friends. And I thought, in my head, what? Julie died in California before David moved to Pittsburgh, and yet she knew Father Metzler? How could this be? So, say more, please. Father Metzler traveled to California in Julie's last year of life. Needed a place to stay? He stayed with David and he met Julie, and their connection was instant. And by instant, I mean that it blew David away. When Julie was living, and it brought comfort and solace to him when Julie died. So much so that a move to Pittsburgh was without question his next step. Now, everybody knows the story, but it gets even better. Because Father Matzler was absolutely certain that his friend Evelyn Christie should meet his friend David Oliva, who had just moved here from California. Now, all you can say about that is either wow or duh, of course. And that partnership has been a joy to see, each protecting, supporting, loving and encouraging each other. And this parish and this faith community has benefited mightily from their love for each other. The special role this parish plays in the lives of its members in the community of Wilkinsburg and beyond, in the Diocese of Pittsburgh, and in the fulfillment of God's promises to each of us is a large measure of David's legacy. The future of this parish, and I think, Father Taylor, you alluded to it a bit. I may be more direct than maybe I'll take the role of David today. It was less certain when Father Metzler died. And David, in partnership with many others, supported the culture of this community that has assured this parish's ability to not just survive, but to thrive and to continue to be a beacon of love and acceptance. So I would say that David's legacy is assured, but we each have a responsibility in guaranteeing that. And our challenge is to accept his excellence in caring in helping and in loving into our own hearts so that we may pour it out to each other as he did. May God bless each of you and may he always keep David a little bit safe.
And now for the final commendation. Please stand. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for David, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see David again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Let us pray in silence. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother David in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon David in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother David forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother David to his place of rest. May the angels lead you into paradise, and may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.